This is the Rainbow Aviation Video Channel, and I'm your host, Brian Carpenter. Prop calibration video take two. In this video, we're going to show you how to use a video camera, an iPad, or a cell phone with a camera feature as a tachometer calibration tool on your aircraft. It's surprising how many aircraft we find with inaccurate instrumentation when doing maintenance or an annual inspection. And knowing your engine RPM is crucial. The tachometer has always been considered an essential piece of equipment as it tells us about the power output, and the power output correlates specifically with aircraft expected performance. It allows us to monitor the engine through the entirety of the RPM range. This includes the maximum RPM limitations as well as any cruise RPM restrictions for certain engine and propeller combinations. If you're flying a standard category aircraft, we refer to the type certificate data sheet that contains within it the minimums and maximum RPM limitations for your specific airplane engine propeller combination. At full throttle static operation or during the takeoff roll, not achieving maximum RPM listed could be an indication of the engine not producing the required amount of power and a potentially dangerous situation. On the other end of the spectrum, a maximum RPM limitation that if exceeded may result in damage to the power plant. In many of these engines, it's specified in the maintenance manual that an engine overhaul is required if you exceed the specified limitations even for a few seconds. Having a tachometer that is inaccurate by only a few percent may allow you to exceed these limitations without you ever being aware. Checking the accuracy of your tachometer is money in the bank. Whenever troubleshooting an engine problem, we never use the aircraft instrumentation unless we first validate its accuracy. Normally in the shop we have test instruments that can be used for the validation and checking and calibration of each one of the instruments before we begin the troubleshooting process. Getting bad data from instrumentation can really frustrate the troubleshooting process and oftentimes leads to creating even more and greater problems. Tachometer errors are one of the more common instrumentation errors that we see in the troubleshooting process. Unless you're extremely experienced with your aircraft and engine combination, it's not likely that you would be able to identify an inaccurate tachometer without some other means of testing its accuracy. We have an optical tack in the shop that we use, and it's a very handy tool for checking tachometer calibration. But it's not likely you're going to want to shell out $300 for an optical tack for this single purpose. Believe it or not, your video camera or the video camera on your iPad or cell phone can be used to check the accuracy of the tachometer in your aircraft. So let's take a look at how this is done. First, we want to set or identify the video frame rate on the camera that you're going to be using. Video cameras take video at a very specific frame rate. One of the most common frame rates for video capture is 29.97 frames per second. And this is the frame rate that we're using to shoot this video. This basically means that the video is a compilation of pictures shot approximately every 1 30th of a second. If we slow the frame rate to one frame per second, your eye can now see the individual pictures. Since we're going to be using this to check our propeller RPM, or revolutions per minute, we want to ensure that we're working in the same set of units. In this case, we're going to be working in minutes. We want to convert the frame rate from frames per second into frames per minute. And we do this by multiplying times 60 seconds. So 29.97 times 60 gives us 1798.2 frames per minute. If we synchronize the frame rate, 1798.2 frames per minute, and the propeller, 1798.2 revolutions per minute, this means that the propeller will be in exactly the same position each time that a picture or a frame is taken. 
Or we could think of it by taking the picture of the propeller every 360 degrees of rotation. This will give the appearance of the propeller standing still when viewed as an individual frame or as a video. If the propeller RPM is slightly faster than the frame rate, this will give the appearance that the propeller is slowly moving forward in the normal direction of rotation. And vice versa, if the propeller RPM is slower than the frame rate, it will give the appearance of the prop rotating slowly backwards. The greater the difference between the frame rate and the propeller RPM, the greater the illusion of the propeller rotating will be either forward or backwards. If we double the RPM to 3596.4, the relative picture through the video camera would be identical, but we would simply be taking a picture every 720 or two rotations of the propeller. In this video, we're using a two-bladed propeller. And if the propeller is traveling at half of this target speed, it will still appear as though the propeller were standing still However, if you go frame by frame through the video, what you will notice is that you're seeing every other blade switch positions as the propeller is only rotating 180 degrees for each frame. And it is this principle that holds true if you rotate the propeller one and a half times the target speed. You will see every other blade show up when watching one frame at a time. This gives us four or five usable reference points at which the propeller will appear to be motionless when viewing it through the video camera. Keep in mind that we're talking about propeller RPM which is the same as engine RPM on direct drive engines such as Continental, Lycoming, and the Jabru type engines. But for a multitude of light sport type engines that use gear reduction drives, we will have to do the math to correlate the engine RPM with the propeller RPM. So our target points are 899.1, which is for every 180 degrees of propeller travel, 1798.2 for every 360 degrees of propeller blade travel, 2697.3 for every 540 degrees of propeller travel. Keep in mind that zero RPM can also be a, a useful reference point. I've seen a lot of analog tachometers with the needle bent, and if it's not reading zero when the engine's not turning over, it's pretty much a clue that something's gone awry. 899.1 RPM, that's pretty close to idle for most aircraft. 1798.2, typically a mag check range. And 2697, a lot of Continental Lycoming type engines are uh, governed with the propeller governor at 2700 RPM, so this is pretty much a full throttle type of configuration. So we have several reference points that we can use to check the accuracy of our tachometer. And although we can't really easily identify the accuracy of the propeller RPM with a video camera in between these specific points, it will give us an indication of whether or not the tachometer is accurate at the specific target settings. Keep in mind that a great deal of the light sport type aircraft are using engines with gearboxes. Depending on the gearbox ratio, you will need to multiply the reference RPM times the gearbox ratio in order to come up with the cockpit tachometer readings. In the video, we're using the EMG-6 with the Polini 250 two-stroke engine using a 2.8 gear reduction ratio. Since the Polini 250 has a maximum normal operating RPM of 7,500 RPM, we can achieve three target points. What we've been watching in the video 
is the test setup with several cameras operating from different perspectives. Superimposed onto the upper left hand corner of the screen, we have a GoPro camera monitoring engine tachometer readings. Keep in mind that the sensitivity has been turned down so that it's jumping about 20 RPM increments at a time. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, we are showing the optical tachometer as it's measuring propeller RPM through the propeller arc. On the bottom of the screen, we have a graph showing prop RPM on top and engine RPM on the bottom. We also have a floating red and blue arrow that is superimposed onto the graph and it corresponds directly with what the readings of the optical tack are indicating. When we see the red and blue arrow run directly over the top of our target RPM located in the center of the graph, you will also notice that the propeller comes to a stop in the video frame. If the propeller RPM increases slightly from our target RPM, you will see the arrow move to the right. And if the RPM is less than the target RPM, you will see the arrow move to the left. As you can see in the video, the 1798.2 target point is very stable and very accurate when using the optical tachometer. The engine tachometer is not too bad, but because of the jumpy readings, it's not reading nearly as accurate as the piece of test equipment that we're using. We're now preparing to do a full throttle RPM static run up on the engine. And as you can see, we can't quite achieve the target engine RPM reference of 7552. But once we're able to get the aircraft into the air, as you can see in this clip, the prop is almost exactly at the reference target RPM of 7552. You may have also noticed that the correlation with the engine tachometer and the idle RPM readings of the optical tach are unusable. This is because this particular engine has a centrifugal clutch built in which allows the engine to start and idle without the propeller turning. The centrifugal clutch does not begin to engage the propeller until around 3500 to 4000 RPM. This makes for extremely easy starting and much safer ground operations. So there we have it, a simple way to check the calibration on the tachometer on your aircraft. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we encourage you to check out all the other videos that are on our YouTube channel. I'm your host Brian Carpenter and until next time, happy flying!